This is a computer networks question. We are having two hosts P and Q that are connected through a router R. So this is how we can draw this particular configuration. Two hosts connected in between using a router. And then they are saying that the maximum transfer unit that is the MTU or the size of the maximum segment, the maximum size of the segment that you can transfer through that link is said to be its MTU. So the MTU of the link between P and R is 1500 means for this particular link MTU is 1500 bytes and for this link between R and Q it is 820 bytes. So what do we want to do is a TCP segment of size 1400 bytes this particular segment has to be transferred from host P to host Q. So there is no other path from P to Q we will have to go through this intermediate router and then transfer that packet to the host Q. So it has to go through R and it is saying that the identification number or ID value of this particular packet is 1, 2, 3, 4. So as you know this identification field is there in the TCP header which helps the receiver to identify that all the frames having the same ID bits belong to the same segment because when we have a segment and that is fragmented into multiple pieces then all of them get the same ID bits and this ID along with the flags that we have the MF, DF, those flags together with ID helps us determine that all of these fragments belong to the same segment and the order in which they are to be reassembled. So for this one ID is 1, 2, 3, 4. We have to assume that the IP header is 20 bytes in size means there is no extra overhead it is simply 20 bytes option field is not used further the packet is allowed to be fragmented which means the fragmentation is enabled the DF flag is uh, not set by the sender so for the situation which of the following statements is or are correct so before going through that let us understand how this particular transmission would work out because as we know from P to Q there are two different links let us call this as link A and this as link B so we have to pass this particular segment through two different links and as we can see both of them are having different MTUs so in order to send it from P to Q directly we are having two different ways either first find out the bottleneck bandwidth which is 820 bits bytes in this case and directly send the segments of that particular size but the thing is how will we know what is the bottleneck bandwidth there is a procedure using uh, ICMP we use this particular method for MTU discovery of a path but there is no mention of uh, using that thing over here so we will not consider this situation another one can be we will first send this packet directly to the router R and then this router will decide because anyways fragmentation take place at the router itself so this router will then decide that in which way should we fragment the packet in order to send it through this particular link which means according to this second MTU this router R will perform the fragmentation so what we'll actually be doing is the way in which this particular fragmentation will work out is that P will send the packet of 1400 and anyway it is allowed in this particular link because its MTU is 1500 bytes. So this packet of 1400 bytes along with a 20 bytes header that will be sent through this particular link A and it will be received at this router R. But now this R will sense that the MTU of this next link is just 820. So now it will have to perform the fragmentation. What it will do? this is the data this is the header which will not be used it will later be appended to all the fragments that are created so for this 1400 bytes data what it will do is it will create two fragments and as we know the rules of performing fragmentation the size of the data should be a multiple of eight except for the last fragment so what it will do is it will create two fragments first will be of 800 bytes because that is the maximum that is allowed because 800 plus 20 bytes header will exhaust this MTU. So it will create the fragments of 800 bytes and 600 bytes. Then this 20 bytes 
header would be appended to them and then these two fragments would be sent through this link b so now both of these fragments would let us see what will their flags be this is the first fragment and this 600 is the second fragment so for this one let us see what these flags will be for the first one mf flag will be one because more fragments are following it but for the second one it will be zero similarly the df flag it will be zero for it can be one for both because more fragmentation is allowed or not allowed that actually depends but in this particular link there is no need for further fragmentation so we are not even concerned with this don't fragment part we can say that it is zero it may be allowed if there are more routers or even shorter bottleneck bandwidth somewhere ahead in the path so let us say it was sent as zero so this is how it will be sent through this particular link and now let us see what are the options first one is saying that two fragments are created at r and the ip datagram size carrying the second fragment is 620 bytes so now as we saw these segments they are this is our segment in that we have this data part and the header part and this segment is, is then put inside the ip datagram and then that is transmitted and we also know that though there is frames as well in the data link layer in which this entire ip datagram is put so that is how the transmission works out here talking about this particular layer in the network layer the ip datagram size carrying the second fragment means this one will be 620 bytes so yes it is true because here the datagram size what will this datagram size mean it will consist of the segment size plus its header which in this case is 620 for the second one so option a is true i'm coming to the second one if the second fragment is lost then r will resend the fragment with the ip identification value as 1234 so now one thing to be considered here is the original segment had the id bits as 1234 so both of its fragment will also get the same id bits but the thing is if the second fragment is lost then this receiver q will come to know that because it will receive the first fragment and it will see the mf flag as one in it so it comes to know that there must be more fragments following it but it has not received any so q understands that some fragment is lost so it will intimate somehow using icmp packet so there are some strategies for that so it will be intimidated to the sender p but now p does not know that exactly which fragment is lost so instead of sending only the lost fragment because anyway fragmentation is performed by router and not the host itself so instead of sending the fragment what p will do the sender p will transmit the entire segment once again so the next time r will again have to fragment it and then send it out then at that time q can discard the first fragment because it is received multiple times and take the second one so that is how this may work out but here the thing is the same fragment will not be sent out but the entire segment would be sent so that makes b incorrect next coming to c if the second fragment is lost p is required to resend the whole tcp segment that is what we just saw it is true the last one is tcp destination port can be determined by analyzing only the second fragment now as we know in the tcp header there is a field for source port number and destination port number and this particular header is present in all the fragments not just the second fragment so if we want to determine this destination port number then we can use any of the fragments that we have received and not just the second one or just the last one so there is no restriction on that any fragment can be used for this purpose so that makes option d also incorrect so we will be going with a and c as the correct answer